Groove Sound Studios is in your ears. Hey guys, what is up? I'm Wiesna. As always, we are here at my studio, True Sound Studios. And today I wanna to show you one of my favorite and most used plugins for bass. So this is it. This is the Waves CLA Signature Series bass plugin. Now the reason I love this plugin so much is because it has so many of these different faders, so many of these different characters um, that is built into just this one plugin. As soon as you put the plugin on the track, it automatically does something. You know, there's already a slight amount of EQ change and it just, the plugin does something as soon as you put it on the track. So to take a quick look at this plugin, over to your very left is the input sensitivity or essentially how much input signal we're gonna drive into this plugin. And then you have six more faders and these all adjust certain things. You have bass, treble, compress, sub, distortion, and pitch. So what I like about this is for the most part, every single one of these actually has three different parameters inside the one fader that you can change. The only one that you can't is just the sub. And then finally at the end here, there's an output trim so that you can either boost or even cut some more signal. So first let's take a listen to the bass track by itself with no plugins. So it's nothing too exciting, you know, it, it sounds like a bass, it sounds like a bass guitar. So if you put this thing on total default and then go ahead and engage the plugin, you'll hear that instantly it already does something to our bass. And then without it. So as you can tell, it, it already does something. There's, there's this character about it already that just makes the bass sound better. So let's go ahead and play around with these different settings. So first, I'm gonna take all these off by just clicking them until the buttons go white, and that means it's totally off. So we'll start playing around with this bass section. Now, because there's already a sub section on here, I generally don't use this in its sub um, in its sub frequency. I usually use like the lower or the upper, um, just because I feel like you know there's no point in double subbing our bass unless you just want something out of control low end. So maybe somewhere around there, we'll try the upper. Yeah, I don't like that. I think that that lower one is typically the frequency range, whatever frequency that might be. So I think that sounds good. Um, so let's move on to the next one, the treble. So for this, we'll start with <laughs> honk and uh, let's see what this sounds like. Kind of like that. Let's try this one. <laughs> it says bark. So that sounds good too if you like that little brighter bass. Now this is a rock track, so you know this might actually work right here. And then we got the cut. So the cut actually, you know, that really works good if you, you know, you can hear some of that that brightness noise that was in that bass track. So you could cut that out, but I think I like this bark setting, you know, boost it a little bit, maybe somewhere around here. So that sounds good. That sounds good to me. So now let's get to the compression section. So we'll turn this on and we'll start off with this push. So you can tell that really that hits that that bass but not not too much you can hear we're still getting those attacks on that bass so maybe we'll try this the wall So 
So that's good. That's taking care of some of those, those really fast attacks that are on that bass guitar. Okay, so now let's move on to the subsection. So once again, we'll turn it on by turning it yellow. And this adds the whole sub octave into our bass track. So that, that sub, that really adds some low end in there. I think that's probably pretty good. I mean, you know, once again, this is a rock track, so I don't want to, I don't want to kill, you know, our whole low end package going on, uh, by just adding too much sub. So, you know, which brings up another good point. You know, you got to be careful with, uh, some of these, how much you do boost and cut because you don't want to get the bass out of control with the amount of low end that you're going to add. So now let's move on to the distortion section. Now, this is one of my favorites. Um, this really starts to add some character to our bass. Now, right there, I mean, that oh, that sounds really good to me. Take a listen to it with it off. And now with it on. Yeah, it adds that like almost sans amp sound into it. And then there's two more. There's this one, which is really distorted. And then there's rip. So that's that's pretty aggressive. So I think we'll keep it on this growl. I really like that. Now this section, the pitch section, there is chorus, there's wide, and then there's spreader. So this is to kind of create, you know, this this wide chorusy sound. Now almost 99.9% .9 of the time run bass and mono, and these are really more stereo effects. So this is not going to sound as wonderful as it would, but if we listen to the chorus. You can't really tell that much. Um, this is definitely a section that you would want to use if your bass was going to be in stereo. Now, like I said, I never run bass in stereo. So for this section, I don't really typically ever use. So we'll just turn this down. But you guys can obviously play around with the wide and spreader, but you need to make it in stereo. For my taste, I don't really generally use that section. But if you do like bass effects on your bass, this is really something kind of fun to play around with. Maybe not run on the entire track, but maybe for a certain small parts. So then at the very end here uh, is the output section. Which is nice to have because you can really, you know, by if you let's say you boosted these almost to the top, obviously you're gonna have a ton of signal and you can actually back this off all in one plugin. So now that we have this all set up, let's take a listen to it with it on and off. So first we'll start with the plugin off. And then with it on. So that is what I'm talking about. That is a growly, angry, but fat sounding bass. So this is the reason why I really love this plugin. Essentially in one plugin, there's so many different things that you can change and make your bass sound better and just fatter and rounder and really whatever way you want all in one plugin. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Look for one of these videos every single week where I'm going to show you guys one of my favorite or most used plugins when it comes to tracking, mixing, and mastering. So if you guys like this video, consider subscribing and hit that like button. Follow us on Instagram for daily posts. You can find the beats that I make right here at the studio on our SoundCloud page. True Sound Studios also mixes and masters your tracks. So once again, guys, thanks for watching this video. I'm Wiesna, we're at True Sound Studios, and True Sound Studios is in your ears.